Welcome to another Friday afternoon from Melbourne right. Hearns RBC here in Flinders Street. That's really quick, isn't it? For the episode number 45, yes 45. indeed. 45. Just uh, going very fast, busy. It's getting That's really busy one. now. There's the a lot city. more people. Yeah, the city's mm. vibrant again. It's it's beautiful feel actually, going out for lunch. Mm. It's quite a few quite a few people around. So definitely, it's got the buzz coming back. Definitely, yeah. that, that traditional Melbourne kind of feel, yes. which, which is very characteristic. Mm. And uh, last week we had school holiday, so it was busy. And, mm. and this week, despite school holiday being finished, it's mm. still uh, still very exciting. It is. Yeah, there's so, a few visitors going around. Definitely. It's good. Definitely. So if you haven't been in the city yet, make sure you pop back because definitely it's worth uh, it's worth being around. So. Yep. Cool. So another episode. So for a start, let us know what you would like to hear today. If you have questions, yeah, comments, let's, let's do that again, requests. Yeah? yeah, that's right. Okay. So at the very beginning of this show, we'll do like last time, if there's any questions you've got, specifics, uh, anything you want to see, we can quickly run out, grab something, bring it back, have a bit of a chat. Yeah. It's so, all good. Yeah, let us know. So yeah. we'll give it a few minutes to think about. And yep. So Tony, welcome. Happy Friday to you. Hello. Uh, got quite a few people here. Excellent. Well, in the meantime, while everyone's thinking about what they'd like to see. Yes. We've got our car of the week. That is special. Pretty good, isn't it? It's a bit different. That's a different. Extra, extra appendages on it. It's got luggage. Is it? Luggage. It's got some luggage at the back. So it's a suitcase. It's a suitcase, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you go do this type of events, you probably don't need much luggage there. No. So let us know what car we have here. Mm -hmm. It's actually a new release, I think, or it just uh, just arrived. Yep. So something exciting, yep. something different. We haven't so had before. What the brand of the the car maker? We yes. want the model of the car, and then any specific information, which you know is obviously pretty specific about it. And the year, I guess. Yeah, and the year. If we yes. can pick the year. Sure. And the color. Did we say the color? Oh, we didn't say the color. And yes. the color. And the There's color. a special color. This color has a specific name, so it does. color as well. So, yeah. very good. So, let's see if it gets some questions today. We've got quite a bit of RC. We're mm -hmm. going to do some experimenting with Brett. Experimenting? Apparently so. We like experimenting. We like experimenting. It can be dangerous with Brett, though. Uh, yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit concerning. Yes. Um, and then we're going to talk about some chess, some new model kits. Yep. Some yeah. train. Actually, got a bit of uh, quite a few new things for trains yep. from DCC Concept. So, Marling is going to have another small uh, demonstration yep some new tools some new tools yep. lots of stuff so Good everything where should we start where should we start well, should we start with this got? yeah what do you got in front of you okay so this is uh, uh, just a small production from yep. Hearns workshop yeah uh, this is a customer order actually which yes. we produce uh, overnight and I thought we could uh, bring it back again yep. we haven't, we haven't uh, shown this for a little while, so let's have a look at some of these trays that we design in here. Yes. So, what's Hearns Workshop? Hearns Workshop. Well, Hearns Workshop is the manufacturing division of Hearns Hobbies. So, uh, in the early days of Hearns Hobbies, there was a lot of manufacturing, particularly at the time around um, radio control, or it would have been control line, yep. and then radio control aircraft. Yep. So, there were aircraft kits and such. So, we've brought back something that's more of this time uh, with different technology and we've started producing these um, aftermarket bits and pieces figures other accessories as well definitely so these these are, I guess would be amongst the most popular series that we have currently yes yeah so these are the uh, uh, upgrade um, parts so customizing parts they uh, involve uh, bolt heads screw heads um, little control knobs so this particular one that Nick's holding at the moment, it's got the uh, um, the hose 90 degree joiners in bands, various yeah. sizes. Yep. And we have quite a few different ones. We've got three different versions of this one. So this is yes. 90 degree. Yes. Then we have a straight one yes. and a, a T one. T one. Yes. So uh, and as you see, they all have the three different sizes yes. for I guess different type of uh, uh, projects that you may have. There's male yes. and female. Yes. So you can plug them together and, and that could be really good when you scratch build all different things. For sure, because I mean, the things like these, I mean, as good as scratch builders are, I don't think anyone would want to scratch build all these really fine fittings on the ends. So there's really high um, detail on the hex fittings on the ends. And I mean, we, we've designed these and quite often people will say, oh wow, they're really great for a particular um, right. application. application that we didn't even think about. So I think someone was talking about these uh, being great for a, um, a naval uh, anti-aircraft gun, I think, right. on the internals. Okay. So you never know. Anywhere where there's hydraulics, um, pneumatics, uh, they can be handy. 
guess when you do some sci-fi stuff, it'd be more, um, you know, yes, uh, scratch build type, um, you know, rubber or whatsoever. Yes. This, this could definitely be a, a good fit for sure. So I've got a, quite a few of those that are going to go into my um, Mac build as well. And then we have this one here, which is uh, it's just phenomenal, in my opinion. These are these are all the knobs the and knobs. switches, switches, yeah. yeah. So there's a variety of different sizes here too, uh, and these are designed for use in cockpits or any sort of operating space. So again, if you're scratch building, yeah. so any sort of customized uh, sci-fi uh, inside the cockpit, or even with um, modern day jets, so you can use those on the uh, actual control panels uh, in the cockpit. These will look fantastic. So again, there's a diff couple of different sizes there. Yes, and, and quite a variety of different yeah. shapes. So you've done a video um, a few months back on how to use some of these uh, trays where yes. you need to Drill, yes, and then pretty much install this, you know, the stem yeah, of this. Is that right. correct? That's how that's you call right. it. Yeah. So each actually, each one of these is actually on a um, a stalk, and the stalks there's a couple of different sizes of the stalk. So you just need to find the uh, a drill bit that's just slightly bigger than it, uh, so you can locate the part, and then you glue it in with uh, CA or super glue. And I think I've got my sample still here. All right. Oh, here we go. This is, this is my multi use sample actually so i've used this for doing washers as well so these are two particular parts here so i've got one which is like a, a hinge and it's got a couple of bolts on each end and then the other one here is a bolt head so it's a hex bolt head now it was just simply this one was just drilling a hole so the stalk would fit into it and this particular one didn't need it because this is actually flat sectioned and that just glues straight on yeah so just a little bit of detail like that adds quite a lot to this very simple sort of flat looking piece. Adds another dimension. Definitely. Yep. So really simple to use and give really great results. So we have, uh, I think, seven different trays at the moment. Yes, from sounds about right. Nuts and bolts. Yes. Um, hinges. Yes. Um, different part connectors. Yes. Um, what else? It's probably it, isn't it? There's probably, a, yeah. the different nuts and bolts and rivets. Rivets, and rivets. And then there's right. the, uh, the the Zeus connectors, which are quite often on the sides of um, uh, opening panels. Yes. Yep. Definitely. That's one of the newer ones. And so, mm. yeah. So we've got this selection. Obviously, these are designed in here by Warwick. Yes. And so, if you have ideas mm. for different type of tray combination or whatsoever, um, yeah, we, we just let us know. We can mm. definitely add it to. You know, to our list of designs, yeah, for um, sure, and expand the range. Hmm. So, we did we did Hans Workshop. We've designed a tram recently as well. Yes, a comical tram. Yep, which, uh, is available for sale as a motorized version, and yes. soon. And the kit version is coming soon. Soon as well, so you yes. can actually build it, hmm. uh, which is quite nice. Hmm. And uh, yeah, a lot more coming really. So, yes. all happening. Very good. Mm. In the meantime, you guys do have a question. Yes. I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer it, but we'll see. No, okay. actually, I was just reading this. Okay. What is it? Matt, I need you to send me a message on this on Facebook because I was doing some research on that and I couldn't see any G3 Corolla motors. I couldn't find much information about those. So if you don't mind to drop us a message on Facebook mm. with a link, I can now search in just last night, actually. Yep. And I couldn't see anything particular on the G3. There is even on the Hobby Wing page they talk about the Axie system, which right. is this new system and the traditional uh, crawler kind of um, brush speed controller and so forth. Yep. But nothing to do with the G3 series. So if you Maybe don't mind, drop us a message. Uh, something really new. I'll be really interested. Hmm. Um, and yes. Hmm. So let's see. So let us know, please. In the meantime, we have some more people joining us. That's we have okay. Rob, as usual. Ah, uh, Rob, welcome. Hello, Rob. And there's also Bruce from Breaking Hill. And Bruce, welcome everyone. Hello, Bruce. Fantastic. So, for those of you just joined us, we have a car at the front here. Yep. And there's a bit of a guess, guess work. Tell us what car, so manufacturer, model. Yes. Year of, mani year of manufacturing. Yep. And color. And color. Yep. So, jump in the comments, let us know. Yeah. Can be a little bit tricky, this one. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit tricky, I think. But uh, you never know. I think someone will pick it up in a minute. <laughs> Get all the details right. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll Google it, perhaps. So, all right. So we got a wall full of stuff. What shall so we look at? should we start with uh, the god hands? Oh, look at some god hands. Okay. God hands. Yep. All right. So this week we received a another large delivery from 
God hands. Yes, and within there we've got some of these new items. Yes, which um, are quite interesting. So start with. Well, got a bit of reflection going on there. So we've got these new pliers. They're a very fine tipped needle nose plier, yeah. um, and they've got a quite a few benefits to them, which is a bit hard to see there. So I'm going to crack them open and give you a closer look. So we've got one straight set and one bent set. So let's do this. And we might have a closer look at... Let's jump on it top camera, what do you think? Yep. Okay, start with really bright handles. So if you drop these in your workshop, there's a good chance you're going to find them again because... It's so actually some nice, uh, A really nice rubbery feel. Yeah, it's um, quite grippy. Definitely yep. grippy. Not, not soft though, it's just got a good grip, and, but it's yep. not soft, so it's quite firm. Yes. So we've got both of these. There's the same design, basically, in the whole tool, except you see this one's got the uh, straight jaw and this one's got the sharp angled jaw. And you see how thin the actual ends are. So these would be great for uh, holding onto small electrical components, uh, RC use, even for um, uh, plastic modeling as well, where you need to grab onto, say, a bit of wire and such. Now, some of the benefits are, might be a bit difficult to see, but the, these actually got flat jaws but the grip here has been etched in. So I think it's a laser etching. Yeah, so that when you close them, they actually have really tight grip. So if you've got music wire or brass wire that you're manipulating, these are really great. Okay. Um, from here, you can see that it's spring loaded. So it's got a, a gentle spring. So easy for picking and releasing items. But if you don't want to do that, you can disable this spring. So you notice that there's a little button here, a little white button there. Now if I press that, it's going to release the spring upwards and it goes into this recess here. Okay, and so when it's like that, you notice that when I open it, it remains open. So you've got this control like this. So you can open and close it whenever you want to. Okay, but if you want to have it sprung, then just press it again press the button, spring lifts up, open it up, drops into the cavity, and then it's spring loaded again. Such a simple idea. Brilliant. And it gives you so much more versatility Definitely. in a basic tool like pliers. So I guess handy pliers like this can be used in all sorts of situations. So if you only want one set of pliers in the toolbox, I don't think you can really go wrong with these. So you get your angled ones, which I guess in RC use would be really good for Eclipse, Eclipse. Definitely. Um, uh, even with plastic models. So I guess it depends on how you want to access the particular parts. If, if it's uh, you're handling things that uh, quite often are stuck um, uh, in places where it's difficult to access, then the, the angled ones are going to help you there. But for other purposes, I think the straight ones are pretty good. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with these actually, because if they definitely feel good. Yeah, and, and it's, it's good build, spring. good quality build as well. Yes, so these are all made in Japan. Uh, the, I, I like the spring action because it, it's quite gentle. That's right. It's really controllable. Definitely. So, yeah. So cool. these are the uh, new pliers. They call them the Ladio pliers. I don't know why. Um, I'm sure we'll find out. But well, this they're very week, nice. I'm sure that within the next week or two, we'll have a full video review on this. Yes, that's right. So we're, we're going to do um, full usage guides and um, uh, maintenance guides and description of exactly what these do. So at the moment, they're still really fresh. Um, and it's just our initial impressions of what they do. That's right. So nice. Okay, so. All right, so there applies. Let's park those aside. Okay, the next thing would be got this double-sided tape. Now, it's not the first time that God Hand has had double-sided tape. The original double-sided tapes were available in different thicknesses, yeah. and they were designed to hold um, sanding papers onto a surface. So they had a really strong side, which you put onto the paper itself, yeah. and then they had a low tack, which you put onto the um, plate. So that allowed for easy removal when you're changing yeah. it over. Now, this particular one is actually strong on both sides. So the idea behind this one is if you're making your own uh, specialist um, sanding sticks yep. and you needed to stick it onto um, a really tight surface, then yep. you want something that's really Sticks strong. Properly, yeah. So rather than using glue that's going to go everywhere, the tape is going to help that a lot. 
the, the other use of this particular tape is it's super thin. It's just like glue on its own. Right. So if you need to use it for plastic models or um, any other application, it could even be for um, ready controlled bodies where you're putting on Absolutely. The wing, uh, wing plates. The wing plates, yeah. 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 This, this is what you go for. And when you're going to drift in there, you have all the body kit perhaps yes. as well. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So that's what that's for. So use it for making your own tools, your own sanding sticks and whatnot, or it can be for use for anything. So a lot of uses of this particular one. Super huge roll, so one will last you a long, long time. Okay, so that's a, the strong tape. I've got a question for you guys regarding the tape. Yes. <coughs> is it a fairly heavy tape in thickness compared to most other double side, or is no. it actually really thin? It's really thin, it has no film. Yep, so it's only adhesive. Wow. Yep. Okay. Then we'll get into these are quite interesting. So we've got the a range of brushes. brushes. Now initially when I saw these, I might pull these out of the packet because it's a bit difficult to see. These are a very, very short handled brush. Now when I initially saw these, I couldn't really think of a use for them. I mean why would you need them so short? Right? So there's quite a number of different kinds because they're going to have different bristles on the end. Okay, so as you can see, I'll That's just hold it up to my t-shirt there. You can see how short it is. And if we get the overhead, okay, you just see it's really tiny. So the original um, brushes probably extend to about here. And these ones are really short so that you'll notice that when you're holding it, it doesn't reach this particular point on your hand. Now the idea behind these, which makes a lot of sense, is when you're doing really fine work and getting very close. Quite often if you're using um, mag visors and such, the end of the brush actually smacks you in the head. Yep. So it smacks you in the visor. Okay, so you'd be using it like this. So you'd be, you'd be holding your item like this, and then you'll be painting like this. The other way is you can paint like this. Okay, so you can either hold the, the brush within inside your fist, or on the outside like so. So that's really clever I think. Definitely. A lot more versatile. That's right. So I mean, you know, the other option is you get your big brushes and you, and you chop, chop them all down. I mean, that's going to look really I'm sure ugly. everyone has done something like that before, yep. but it's a bit of a, a bit of a waste because the, the larger ones have that kind of nice metal kind of um, handle, isn't it? The, yes. larger, the larger brushes from yes, Godin. So they do. it's a bit of a waste. This seems yep. to be more traditional mm. kind of wooden type handle, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, these have the same um, uh, ultra fine synthetic uh, uh, bristles in them, so that once they start splaying, put you put them in hot really water. hot water yeah. and they straighten up again. So, good stuff. In the meantime, while you're packing those up, uh, yep. Rob's got a question for you regarding the double sided tape. Yes. Um, he's asking, is it strong enough to possibly mount ESCs? Well, uh, probably, but I wouldn't use this for ESC because no. it doesn't have any padding. No, uh, so it's, and so, it's yeah. too thin. So, yep. really, you, ne you need a bit of give. Yeah. Because quite often that on a chassis plate, it may look flat, but it won't be totally flat. Yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, without the padding, you're going to get all the vibrations getting yeah. transmitted straight through. Lots the of uh, lots of the ESC tend to suffer that yes. kind of vibration. Yes. On road, maybe not too bad, but off road, you definitely want some time even to put double double side tape yep. to have the extra kind of uh, yep. kind of um, you know uh, layer yeah, of protection, cushioning. really cushion. Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, but for mm. other sort of um, Applications. Constructions, yeah, yeah definitely. That's fine. Yeah. I guess to attach maybe transponders, but I guess all that kind of stuff. I would still use more of a traditional thicker double side tape. Yeah, I think definitely a little bit of give. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're the different types of brushes. So what have we got here? We've got super fine. I had a super fine one. There's the oblique one, which is a flat brush with the angle cut into it. So you use that for um, blending. A sharp point fine here. Okay, so that's a, a slightly bigger one than the one yep. I had. Yep. That's like a, a triple zero sort yep. of size. There's a, a fine one here. Uh, which is like a, a five zero. One I had earlier is like a ten zero. It's super fine. And then there's a long one, which is um, it's got a long bristle. And the advantage of the long bristle is it can hold more paint. So if you're doing lines, yep. um, you don't have to re uh, reload your paintbrush. Okay, so these are five different kinds there. Brushes. Yep. And then going along with brushes is <coughs> this new um, brush care sheet. So it has quite a few uh, benefits with this particular yep. material. So whereas um, you would normally use, uh, say, a kitchen towel. Yeah. So I'd use kitchen towel, lay it down, and you would load up your paintbrush. Yep. Uh, quite often you have too much in there, and you wipe it clean on the um, 
the towel. The thing is, the towel's gonna have quite a bit of fur on them, um, and it can also be abrasive on the brush. So this particular stuff here, it's a special uh, cellulose filament, and it's been produced so that there's no chance of any fiber coming off. Coming off, yeah. yeah. The other advantage is um, uh, it's anti-static, so the static itself doesn't attack the bristles, because the static, when it gets into the bristles, it forces them apart. And then the other thing is um, it absorbs a lot of water. Yeah. So you can use these as the base of a wet palette. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess really this is a product can be used for many other applications where you don't want to have that fluff from the paper coming on your models or yes. when you're cleaning something. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking when you're painting body shells where you're kind of drying them and doing all that kind of work as well. Yes. You want to have them like without kind of that, you know, dust and hairy kind of. So let's go. pull one out. Okay. So there's quite a few in each one and you can see it's got this particular weave to it yeah it's got an open open weave so like you said if you want to wipe things with it you can okay it comes out like a tissue see how it's semi-transparent okay so this particular stuff here you can always feel it's, it's pretty smooth to the touch definitely yeah interesting and no loose fibers that, that's I think the most important thing really. Yep. I'm going to ask a question regarding that. Yep. I guess from computers and phones, would it be perfect for cleaning a screen for instance? By oh, I guess, I guess it could. We'll give it a go. Oh, it's a bit rough. Is it? Is it? Is it going to scratch? Perhaps. We need to probably well, be careful I think, I think it'll be okay with glass. Glass, yeah. Um, and not anything models, else? Really. Yeah, maybe. If you're trying to clean like a, a car like this, I think it could be a bit, bit scratchy. Yep. But, so it, but it's very, very absorbent. So it's meant to absorb 13 times the amount of this particular wow. uh, material. So hence why it works really well with um, basing for um, uh, wet palettes. And then also when you're using this as a, a wipe material, I guess you just fold it up like this. Yeah. Have it just handy there and just wipe, wipe your brush across it like this. That's uh, interesting. Mm. And it comes in a you know, box. box is quite big. Uh, and I guess there's quite a lot in here. Let's see, 50 sheets. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So it uses a special Bemlier's cellulose filament, non-woven sheet. So filament is nearly circular, less damage to the brush when you wipe. Yep. High liquid absorption, thanks to the cotton-based material. Uh, soft and gentle, perfect non-woven sheet for brushes. So yeah, we might try it on different things and see well, how to use it. I guess this week or next week I'm going to have a proper review, a bit of, bit of practicing on this. Yep. And we'll and blow a nose out. in it and see what happens. Absolutely, all yep. kind of applications. Yep. Any suggestions, put them in the comments. Yes. We may, may or may not try that. Yeah. So, I mean, even simple things like tissue, yep. I mean, God hand look at simple things in brushes That's and right. how to improve it. So, you may think that it's really, really simple, but it's I, think, I think after you, you yeah. start using it, it's like, wow, it's a game changer. So, that's something new. Very good. Okay. Well, and, and on top of this, we received the restock of everything else. As oh, well. yes, that's right. Uh, the nippers, the traditional, you know, yes. uh, was the SP120? Yes, yep, uh, the ultimate and nippers. Ul ultimate nippers and, yes. and all the rest of the range, brushes and yep. uh, sanding sticks. Yep. I, I really like the sanding sticks from Godin's. Oh, they're good. I've been using them a lot in our uh, projects, you yes. know, when we, when we prototype things and we yep. want to clean them up. They're really good and effective. Yep. I like the little pads, the small ones that you can cut. Yes. They're really effective when you're trying to go into curve surfaces. No, they're and really that. good. And so. I recently used them on a tutorial which will come out a bit later uh, yeah. with polishing. So they work ah, really yes. well with polishing paint as well. And so look out for that. And stuff. Yeah. Yes, yeah. look out for that tutorial. Yeah. Brilliant. Good. Right, so All right. just a minute after we spoke about a the car, there's a couple of good suggestions here. Okay, yes. So I think we're very close to the result. So it looks like a Valiant, Rob is suggesting, and Tony is suggesting an American Muscle Chrysler. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. we're very close, guys. Yeah. So, all right. That was less than a minute. Yeah, it was. So all we've right. got another minute now to get the rest. So what do we left? We got the um, the color, the color, mm -hmm. the year, and there is a model as well. Yeah. If, yeah. If that's yeah, all right. maybe a bit yeah. harder than that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it will stretch out, won't it? Yeah. Make the make the quiz. Yes, last that's it. Longer. That's it. Okay. But I think we are the Evalian Chrysler is. Okay. So color color is a bit special. Definitely. Mm. So, cool. 
All right. Well, moving on to a couple of other things that I'm really excited about. You, BJ ordered some of these kits a couple of weeks ago. They're a bit different, aren't they? So, so ICM is another company from is that Czech Republic or Ukraine? Ukraine, isn't it? Or let me see. The are they Ukraine or Russian? U Ukraine. Ukraine. They are Ukrainian. Yeah. Okay. So I met with them in Germany a few years ago. They have a huge range yes. of, I would say mostly 35th scale figures. That's where they started from memory. Yes. They had a huge range of that. But now they start making these diorama kind of sets. Yes. Which are really, really interesting. So I think they produce these for the uh, Chernobyl um, mini series. Um, they're a little bit different because they're semi diorama in the concept. Yep. So. They're, they're interesting they've got the vehicle so with this particular set you've got the vehicle you've got the figures and the firefighters this one as well you've got the, the vehicle and then you've got the figures and then there's a, a printed backdrop that comes with it as well oh wow not too sure if a printed one comes with that I think it may yeah but this one is the, um, the rubble cleaners so they're the poor suckers that were on top of the uh, reactor and were uh, pushing all the broken bits around so you can see that this way a bit of reflection yeah yeah so I guess ICM like many of the other Eastern European brands they started off being really basic yep. because they're following the market and seeing what people like but they have a lot of different stuff they do aircraft all yes. different scales uh, a lot of these sort of 35th scale armored vehicles yep. and military figurines uh, and also 35th scale they do a lot of odd sort of German type right. vehicles too and uh, the quality is really good uh, actually I, I looked at one of the um, uh, 48th scale Spitfires before yep. Um, actually, Nibble goes kind of have a look at inside and we right. opened it up and it had a, a full engine in it. Wow. Um, panels that come off for viewing the machine guns and I mean, for the price, it was really, really good. Definitely. Yeah. Their, their yeah. range is massive. I remember when mm. I was looking at their catalog, it's, it's huge. Yes. So, yeah. They definitely do a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, and but, unusual. Yeah. And uh, definitely interesting kind of concept of starting to produce a box set for diorama. Yeah. Yeah. So. I guess there's a lot of people, I mean, everyone would like to do a full-size diorama, yeah. but not a lot of people have time to do so a full. And selecting Yeah, yeah. I everything. guess with a little backdrop, it allows you to get that idea of the scene mm -hmm. we've just built in the kit. Which we, is inspirational, really, just to yes. not having to think of what what goes with what. Yes. At least, you know, these four or five items here, they just all go together and you can, you can add to it. Yeah, that's right. And then we also had that 24 scale. They've done some of those um, yes. vintage cars, and we had the um, the Carl Benz prototype car, which was really interesting too. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, very ICM. interesting. So, yeah, really nice. And I guess some of this would go really well with some of the green stuff for kind of um, special paints and yes. effects, really. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like the spider web yes. one, and yep. um, what did we have? We tried this. Was it the frost? The frost. Oh, I should bring it over, shouldn't I? The frost, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Still over there? Yeah, the yeah. frost is still sitting there. So, green stuff is cool effects there they do so it works perfectly I mean you've got this really sort of um, post-apocalyptic yeah. uh, nuclear war type of look with this sort of stuff uh, even though it's reasonably modern I mean it happened in the 80s yeah. you can already see the sort of age and the design yeah. of this aesthetic in their trucks which is really cool I think definitely yeah hmm brilliant so ICM stuff that's it so let's pack this back up here and in a second, I guess we're going to have other Brett or Marlin. Let's see who's going to show up to help us. Yep. Let's see if we can find Brett or Marlin. But oh, here very rumbling. Meanwhile, we actually received this, which is very unusual for uh, for us. Hmm. Brett is having lunch by the look of it. Oh, you finish your lunch. You we're going to talk about the chessboard for a minute. Oh. I'm here. I'm awake. All right. I'm oh. alive. Hello. We've got a chessboard. We've got a chessboard. Well, it's actually not the board in here. It's oh. the pieces. Oh, okay. Well, you so, buy it separately. Yeah, so you can customize your chess set. Really? Yeah. So this particular one open. is really interesting because the particular design of these pieces. All right, so let's pop that over there. All right, we've got a bit of foam here. Let's crack it open. Look at that. Wow. Here we go. So actually, it's spin around. It's probably easier to see. This is the Australian set. I'm gonna say, is that a koala? Yeah, it's a koala with, you know, we got, we got the kangaroo. Kangaroo, yeah. Doing, 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 doing. The kangaroo is king, is it? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I think you're gonna have to try and work well, it out. So he'll be the king. It Who's doesn't the queen? have a joey pouch. Is it a koala, the so. queen? Well, the koala's probably the queen, I guess. Got the, the joey and joey's. Joey's in the middle there. That's funny. 
You get your platypus. You know, that'll be a bishop because he's holding, yeah. on, holding on to the, the cross there. I mean, they're quite comical, aren't they? They are cute, actually. That's, that's a really good idea. What do you got here? We've got the kookaburra. I might not hear kookaburras every morning going off. So there's a kookaburra. So what's a kookaburra going to be? So obviously that's the... Um, well, you, you're not. That's the knight, yeah. Yeah, it will be. Okay, and then you've got um, castle. The, that's a Sydney castle. Sydney Opera House, isn't Sydney it? Sydney Opera House. Sydney Opera House is a castle. Yeah. So okay, so you've got that as a rook. It's, it's sort of got the rook shape, isn't it? Okay, and then you got your pawns here, and then you you call the kidnas. <laughs> that's brilliant. It's super that round. Really cool. They're all sitting on little stones and things. So the Australian set. Actually, quite quite a tall set, isn't it? Yep. It yeah. is a fantastic idea, actually. So, look at that. Got your different colours here, so opposing colours. Traditional white and black. Yep. Nice. That's lovely. Something different. I'll give you guys a question for it. Yep. Can you tell what they're made out of? Are they made out of polystone, wood, plastic? It feels like a, a resin. Resin. Yep. Yeah. So some That's of those... probably how they get such a high quality detail. That's right. Yeah, yeah for sure. Looking so well. Yeah. So it's been cast and then washed to get uh, all those three dimensional elements coming through. It's really nice. It's cool. not your usual chess set, is it? Well, definitely not. No. So I yeah, mean... so you can either get this yep. for your existing uh, set, or you can mix and match and find another um, board. That's right. Mm. Brilliant. Very really good. So. That is very right, left yeah. field, isn't it? It is. We are going to talk about models for racing. Well, all kind of brushless models. We were, weren't we? We were going to talk about brushless motors. So last and week, we're going to get an analyzer out, weren't yeah, we? So last week we tried to do this, but you were not cooperating from home. <laughs> I wasn't cooperating so from home. We're trying to engage with Brett from the chat because uh, we're trying to do this experiment mm -hmm. without you. That's right. But you're in person. So what have we got here? So a couple of high performance racing motor brushless. Absolutely. And I thought, um, videos we could show what how they're made perhaps how they're made what and, they're made um, of how they work maybe how they work how they work yep. perhaps and uh, talk about I'm not exactly electrical engineer but you've got the basics of it yeah obviously yep. they're all the components obviously the past mm -mm, 10 or probably nearly 20 years now that they've they've gone from brushed motors to brushless yep. that's mm -hmm. probably the two biggest fundamental difference of the electric motors that we use in in RC now yeah um, and people often band around or brushed or brushless. They just think it, that brushless is is faster, and and it's been tuned to a point where it does put out a lot more power than the brushed motors. The main difference between the two is um, that a, a brushed motor operates on DC current, so you can just hook that up to a battery, negative and positive, and that'll power and run from a DC current. Yeah. An AC motor, oh sorry, a brushless motor uses AC current, so alternating current. So you can't just hook a battery up to any one of these three three points and and make it work so you need to to switch it over in a in a sine wave configuration i think that's the right terminology mm -hmm. and then that will power the motor up yeah um there's much less um mechanical friction in a brushless motor because you don't have the the physical brushes on the commutator yep. of the motor um for there there's no it's a contactless the motor Yep. So it's actually the magnets moving around the outside of the motor. Yep. Um, yeah, like electrically. So that's how it switches the, the different phases. So it's a three phase motor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, the other terminology that people use is poles. Um, now you can have two pole motors, four pole motors, etc. Depends on the application. Yeah. Um, our censored competition motors that we use for tent scale uh, are generally two pole. So negative. Uh, sorry, north and south pole. Just um, the the rotor, the the internal mm -hmm. bit, the spinning part yep. has got two different magnets on it. Whereas some of the eight scales, um, aeroplanes and stuff like that, will have four poles, six poles, multiples of two. So the idea of the the more poles is the smoother it's it's meant to Smooth. be. Yeah, and you tend to find those more in uh, sensorless. Yeah, 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 more yep. in sensorless applications because yep. these are more more sort of high tech or. They use a, a sensor board to control the, the switching of the the AC current. Yep. Um, that's why they're referred to as censored, censored motors. Yep. So you've got three three heavy gauge connections 
and then you've got the, the six pin connector on the back to to monitor the sensors um, and that sort of talks it's almost like a an elect, well, it's like an EFI signal on your, your car engine or whatever and that's what tells which phase that the rotor's in in conjunction to which phase that it has to power up next. Yeah. And you can do certain things like add referred to as turbo and boost and things like that. And effectively these these brushless sensored motors are a lot more versatile because they're a lot more tunable. You can effectively give the car like like three speeds. So mm. like a zero degree static <clears throat> timing motor, you just call like one speed, then you can add boost so that could be a set timing um, that's applied to to how it switched from 30% to 65% RPM or throttle opening. And then you've got turbo, which will come on maybe the last 30%. So it might come on from 60% to 100% throttle opening or RPM activated or, and you tune all those three things to get a good feel and smooth and also depends on what you're racing. Track conditions and everything. Track conditions yeah. generally, 90% of people run what we're calling blinky configuration, yeah. which is zero timing, um, which makes it easier and takes a lot of the tuning work out of it. Mm. So with that, you've got a little bit of end bell timing, which you can do mechanical timing. Um, but yeah, apart from that, that's a very big nutshell, I suppose, of, yeah. mm. of uh, brushless motors. So I suppose what we could do next, do you want to run one up or do Should you want to- run it and then we pull it apart? We'll run it and pull it apart. Yeah, in case yeah. you can't put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two. We actually have two in case. What are we going to use to run it? I've actually got a... Do you have a motor analyzer I've here? I've got a new one. I have got a motor analyzer here. Yes, this is from. One. This is from Master Joe. Oh. This is the old war horse. These are the ones... We've actually got them in the cabinet here for display, but I didn't want to get one out and scratch it and everything. Yes. I should have got a new one a new one out with me to, um, to check this one out. But that's exactly the same as what we're using now. We're using okay. a fully charged battery. We're using a fully charged battery. That's just an old puffed. Puffed. <laughs> that's right. It's no good. For, no so good safe. for much. No good for much else. So, so let's put a uh, camera from top. So let's move quickly up here. Yep. yep. So in the middle. We'll move quickly. I'm gonna plug this. this in. Yep. All right. So it's on. A couple of connections to make. The first one that I'm gonna make is the sensor. So the sensor basically allows the speed controller to know at which point to energize the pole, right? A certain pole. So yeah. it, it always knows um, uh, when, when to rotate at the uh, optimum point. And these clips are quite tricky. Most of the time we, we usually solder them, but for this application you can see why the clips don't usually get used much because we can't have that shorting out if we can help it. Oh, well, that'll probably be okay. <clears throat> if you see any sparks, you'll just see me running. That's okay. Yep. We got a fire extinguisher, haven't we, somewhere? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a good chance I'll be running Maybe. out of the shop, though. This is quite awkward, to be honest. Oh, that'll work, won't it? Is that touching? I think that maybe this is something that we should have rehearsed. Rehearsed? No, never. What do you no? Mean? We're no. rehearsing it right we, now. We don't have a plan All anymore. right. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, so we are on. So maybe. we're on. This looks like the game operate, operation. So we're right? looking overhead. So I'll get a bit closer so we may see some numbers here. So we're going to look at some numbers. There and you go. So we can see now that the, the C sensor is the one that's energized. So that's where the rotor sensor is over. So if right. we spin that around, we see now we've got C and B. Are now energized and that should go around to B and then you'll notice B and A. Right. And then okay. that'll keep going around. See? Okay, so that, that's telling you... That's telling us that the sensor's hooked working. up correctly and yep. it is working. So yep. that'd be the first step on the motor. Okay. Um, then we can do a motor timing check. So what that can do, that can check your sensor board in relation to mainly that there's three sensors on the motor so you can check how closely tuned they are. As a rule, you want them within one or two percent. Usually the better the better tuned the sensor board is or the more uh, in sync it is with the rotor, mm -hmm. the better the motor will perform. Um, the other thing it's going to do is it'll average those three numbers out and you can reference that against the mechanical timing mark on the back of the motor. Um, now that's usually not, not accurate or whatever but it's a good indication 
so you know what it's at. Mm -hmm. So if we push this on here, I'm going to push start. You can hear it running up and doing its thing. Now this is all doing it itself. You can see the counter going up, the motor running. You probably can't hear me. Oh, I probably can. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> this is an old off-road motor, 13.5 turn. I think many people have used this motor. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's had a good home, so it's finished. Yeah. It looks well Average done. of 55 degrees, so it's definitely one of Nick's motors. Yeah, <laughs> it's been it's been cranked up pretty high. Hey, it's yeah. probably been run pretty hot. That's near the end of the timing marks, I think. You're probably maximum timing is yeah. probably. I think it's 15. We 60. 55. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. And the next things that we can see um, <clears throat> is it showing our sensible. So we got 53 on the A phase, 55 on the B phase, and the C phase was 57. 57. Yeah. So yeah. we've got a variance there of four degrees, which, so it's not great. So it's probably been heat warped and, and whatnot. It's probably better than that new, but that's an indication. So we've got an average of 55 degrees. You can mark that on the can. So that's, that's your static, um, test the other thing that we can do is a noise level test believe it or not so we can check a noise level usually run it when you come back from the track mm -hmm. before you do maintenance you might run it or if you bother to write it down so you can see how noisy your bearings are now motors you really want between a nice motor should be between 85 and 88 decibels well, it's going to be noisy then i imagine that this one's probably a little bit a little bit hold uh, probably a little bit louder being being um old I'm, I would be surprised if that would be the case. say well loved. I, I think that bearing is brand new almost. Yeah. Ooh. So you can hear even now at low RPM, we've got 93 decibels. <laughs> That's okay, that one. It's come uh, it's 98, 95, run it up. So it's not, it's not fantastic, but it's still more than utilized. So it's showing that we've got 98 peak decibels there. So you could use that as a reference before you take it apart. Maybe you're going to clean it, or maybe you go, oh, I need new bearings. Now. I guess the bearing is probably the, the biggest uh, indication there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you can you can get tools. Orca have a tool that you can press them in and out and stuff, yeah. and people do mm -hmm. change them, and there's certain grade bearings that you can put in. But as a, well, mo most people, as a rule, when you're, the bearing's worn, and that's really the only consumable part in the motor, the motor's done enough work, it's time to, to put on. it aside for a spare. Yeah. So you might put a new motor in, or just keep that one for a practice motor, just do it like that. You can go to the trouble of putting new bearings and stuff in, but the rest of the motor's usually that, um, that, that old and worn. Well, I guess that's something that you'll consider when you've got a brand new motor. You'll yeah. run it and see if you want to change the bearings in it. Absolutely. Now here's probably the most inc the most critical te uh, check that we can do. So this is the the KV uh, RPM check. So mm -hmm. this is what they use for sanctioned events and yep. race meetings like that. So where you don't have to have a handout motor, but everybody's motors got to get scrut scrutinised. So they all have to be set um, to a specific KV, and that's to make sure that everybody's on a level playing field um, and nobody's got their timing too far high or any cheating yep. going on. So they might set it to 2600 kV or whatever, and they can do that by um, running the motor up and adjusting the timing on the back. So again, this will be another one. Yeah, KV is um, revs per volt, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's 1000 RPM for every volt that's applied to the motor. Yeah. Um, and that is the biggest... I've got wires touching, that's what's happened here. I don't have to run yet? No. Nah. Anyway, I've probably disturbed one of the plugs. It's probably this, this touching here, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. So that'll give you a, a KV rating, and you can effectively make two motors identical to each other, like from a tuning point of view. So it levels the playing field um, to ensure that. So when yep. you have, and you can see this motor here has even been obviously been to a big race meeting in one day it's got a um it's got a green a green paint mark there and that would have been put on by race control at some point when it's been when the timing's been checked the kv's been checked then they, they do up the screws and they mark it with the paint to ensure that the timing's not getting altered and the motor's not getting touched in any way and they can check that at any time during your race meeting mm -hmm. so that is the motor analyzer which is a really handy bit of kit 
It's not the be all and end all in performance and tuning, but it can be an indication. Um, and you can you can monitor your own condition of your own motors as they're getting older or when they need replacing. Yep. Things like that. It's a um, good maintenance tool. Overall. It's a great maintenance tool overall. Hmm. So the next thing we were going to do is pull yep. one of these motors apart, weren't we? Yeah, I think so. Crack it open. So here we've got. That's not in the way there. No, go for it. Gonna need. It's a special tool set for motor maintenance. That's right. This is just for motor maintenance. No, not at all. Master so, Brett. So what I'm gonna do here is loosen the loosen the sensor board. Usually you would take note of where it is, but we already know that this one is at 85 maximum. degrees. Yeah, maximum. Just you to need the top. To just move it up to there. Up to about Perfect. here. That's it. Well done. Look at that. So this is the sensor board of of oh, the so motor. those three screws. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I feel that we probably should have. So there we have our timing cover off. And you can see here, if we're in focus, that we've got now the sensor board oh, is moving. fully floating. So now that that timing ring's off, yep. the sensor board is effectively loose and just flopping around. Yep. So I'm going to get my two mil here. And know that, uh, that motor analyzer has been from the stable of Master Joe, and if that hasn't run thousands of motors over its life, they're a really good thing. There's mm. something that you'll probably only buy once only buy life. once in your life, yeah. and you just you look after it and keep using yeah, it. Yeah, you just keep using it. Mm. This motor's been uh, tuned up before. It's got aluminium screws screws in it. Somebody's put aluminium screws in this motor at some stage. That wouldn't have been a factory factory option so what's going to happen now is now that the, the I've taken the through screws out of the motor yep. is now I can take it off the sensor board and the bearing retainer yep so here we have a dust cap and a little shim yep and this is one of the that's like a Teflon shim is it yeah that's a Teflon shim that's we a can see bearing. here that we've that's yep. a ceramic bearing and you can see there that that's that's going to be part of the culprit as to why as the wear and tear that's really the only mechanical thing in the motor is the two that's the only two touching points is the, t the two bearings front and rear yeah now here is the sensor board mm -hmm. and there's a brass shim in there which would have been on the end of the rotor now if we have a look here we can see this is like fine 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 but there's three pickups here and that's what we're referring to. That's what's reading the motors, that's what's reading the phases on there. Um, the next part is to get the rotor out. There's another shim. You can take the front housing off. It's going to come out this way. It's probably had a loose pinion at some stage. Yeah, because it's, it's marked the shaft. Yeah, it's marked the shaft. This is actually fully tuned motor from Phantom actually from memory. That's a factory tuned one, is it? Yeah, I think so. That's why it's got the yeah, and I'd say that you've even maybe cut the shaft. Did you Perhaps. have that in a a BD series car maybe? Yep. And had it too far over yeah, and it was probably rubbing on your battery. Yeah. So you've probably cut the shaft with the drill. Chainsaw and off we go. <laughs> <laughs> So that is the that is the rotor of the motor. And you can see there that there's absolutely nothing that that physically touches the uh, the motor winding or, or whatever what what's in there. Hmm. And this is the collector ring, where the three phases are soldered together. And you can see it's a nice quality motor, really good soldering, really heavy wire. Um, yeah, really so nice solder. It's interesting to look at all the windings here because on a brush motor, those windings are actually on the rotor. Yeah. It's the other way around, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. The magnet that's on the rotor is actually on the on the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like they're they're inside out effectively yeah. to one another. Um, yeah, and that's the the biggest difference between brushed and brushless motors. So they would act, indeed have three three magnets on a on a brushed motor, whereas these ones will and they'll have the two north and south yep. and in the can. Yeah. Where these ones that have the north and south here, the two poles. Yes. And the three wire the three windings out here. Yeah. So even on the rotor, it's important to say that there's different size rotors, different diameters. 
Yeah, so they will produce different different kind of performances. Different but power bands and characteristics. Manufacturer like Phantom, they select the rotors and they actually have a rating. So they, me they measure the magnetic field of each mm. one, and then when you buy them, you have actually um, a selection on you know Absolutely. different um, magnetic fields. So the yeah. highest, the better the quality the motor is. Yeah, generally, unless you're racing 12th scale or something, you really need to dull the power curve yeah. down. You want high RPM mm. and low yeah. torque, so then you'll use like a titanium or low magnet a uh, low magnetic rotor, yep. whereas most people in stock and that will run the most amount of, of magnet they can get in yep. there. Um, yeah, and you can see here, well you probably can't see, but there's laser laser etching on there with the part number, um, so what it was initially, um, so you could probably look that up and get all the specs off there. Yep. Um, and there's another a, another machine called a, a rotor checker, which yep. m measures the, the magnetism of the rotor That's as well, right. so you can see, because when they run through heat cycles um, and they get old, they do lose a bit of magnetism over their life. And the more they get, the more they get overheated, the the more performance that they generally tend to lose over life. But that is, uh, yeah, the the breakdown of a, a competition uh, tent scale brushless motor, sensor well, brushless wow. motor. Hmm. So we've run it up, we've tuned it. Now we've got to put it back together and run it again. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Not on this episode, maybe. No. Well, you want to go for it? No, we're going to park it. We're going to park it up. Because we're going to have Marlin to gonna talk about training in a minute. Yeah. Uh, this is brilliant. What's young Marlin got in for us today? I think there is a lot. Yeah? I think so. <laughs> he says so. He says so. He says, I need 45 minutes. Well, let me get this out of your way then. All right. Brilliant. Let's park it all here. And then we're going to spend the night here trying to put it together. No, all that won't take more than... Th that won't take... Well, shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. And we've got a we've got a nice comment from uh, Matt Ryan saying quite yep. timely to have a motor expert on today. Great work, guys! Oh. Excellent, <laughs> thank you. That is a far stretch. I'm far from an expert, <laughs> but I like that compliment nonetheless. Good. Well, so thank you for this. That was really informative. No, you're more than welcome. I'll get out of your hair. I'll leave you with the rest of the show. Perfect. Uh, I believe to add on to that, uh, come next week we should have a follow-up blog about the internal workings of the uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, so there will be more information coming about brushless motors. We'll probably take some good photos of this exploded view of this motor before yes. we put yeah. a very good view. Yeah. Fantastic guys, take care. Thanks for watching. Thank you. See you guys. Catch Thanks, you next time. Alright, Marlin. Alright. So, train time. That was pretty, Excellent. pretty great seeing that motor come apart. It's and... interesting, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, I learned a lot from that. <laughs> Me too, actually. Really good. You so must have be a, familiar with that car, are you? A we, little bit. A little bit. I would like to have one. Would yeah. you? Yeah. I thought you said this before. <laughs> I don't know whether we have any more guesses on the car yet. No? What, what, what do we live with? Color. We need the, the yeah, color and the year. The year and the color yeah. and yeah. the version. Uh, okay. Anything. Yeah. I think the year and the color are the most critical part. So let's see if uh, anyone can jump in and tell us what color and what year is this car. Meanwhile, what have you had for us? Well, uh, we got a really big delivery of products from DCC yep. Concepts this week. So a lot of really fun and exciting things that I thought it would be nice to yep. talk about today. So, uh, first thing I will talk about is the uh, rolling road. Do you guys know what a rolling road is? It's a, it's a road that rolls. That's it. Well, it is. But um, it's basically, I suppose the best way to put it is it's like a treadmill for your locomotive. Treadmill! And I'll just get a box for one here. Ah. If you guys can see it. So it has a lot of little bits, yep. and we'll go into that in more detail. So it's it's interesting because we're sort of continuing on the theme of like of tuning things and running yep, things, yes. um, and this is similar in a way uh, in that it's a way of, of putting your train on a, a small bit of track yep. and being able to run it at any speed in any yes. direction uh, for as long as you need to, Yes. Um, and that's really perfect for um, if you're breaking in a new locomotive Yep. Typically when these are new, they need to be run in either direction um, for upwards of an hour, um, sometimes half an hour, yep. um, at various different speeds. It sort of gets lubricant through all the gears, um, and generally they'll run smoother uh, once everything's broken in. Now, generally um, the motors in these are brush motors, aren't they? That's correct, yes. yes. Usually and a three or five pole. Right. Yep. And so hence why they need to run in, because the brushes work best when they're bedded in on the commutator. Yep. Yep. So almost, almost always you'll see improved running quality. I think I derailed. He's derailed. <laughs> Sorry. Here he is. Yeah, he's better now. Thank you. 
But yeah, you'll almost always get improved running quality um, once you've broken in a locomotive. But not right. everybody has the luxury of a big circular layout where you can do that. Yep. And this is where a tool like this is really handy. Mm. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll put them on the track. Okay, so let's set these up. So they basically have these little, there we go. So you have these little roller wheels yep. and a metal frame, which yep. makes contact with either side of the, you know, your positive and your negative, and then the plastic spacer obviously yep. is insulated. Yeah. Uh, and what they what they give you in the box, I'll see if I can show you. They give you spacers for tons of different scales. Oh, okay. So, out so, of the so box, you can adjust them to fit any track. That's right. Yeah, there's the truck width. Yeah, so you, go, oh, okay. you, use, you use the same for say N scale and double O scale. So you just replace the blue part. Is that yep. correct? That's correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So the blue part, the spacer, um, yep. they give you options for double O, H O, O and thirty is what it's set up for. Yeah. Um, T T, and um, a whole bunch of other ones really. Basically, there's about a dozen different scales that you could use it for. Right. Oh, that's really clever. So all the spaces I just noticed here, they're all marked. So. You know yes, exactly it's easier to recognize which one to use. That's 16.5, double O H O. And we'll just okay, put so those on the track. You're just putting them here. And we're going to try and line it up. Line them up. So, another important note is that they produce these sets with a, a different number of the roller wheels. I believe this one has eight, but they have a set that has up to 12, and then they have right. a set with four. Okay. Um, and that just, it's sort of, um, it depends on the locomotive you're running. So yep. every drive wheel should have one, yep. or every driving axle should have one. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you, if you run a lot of, uh, like say for example, a three axle locomotive like this, um, you, you probably wouldn't need the 12, but then yep. if you had the 12, you could do two locomotives at the same time. Yes. So that's okay. the other thing is you can break in multiple locomotives. So yeah, we'll give that a go. So I guess we can't see it from the top here, but as we turn on the control, just as if the train was going forward, the wheels are spinning on the little wheels of the rolling road. That's right. Uh, so I guess, I guess it's maybe like if there's a way I can tilt it. Yeah, if you hold it. I guess. That's it. Well done. Okay. You can, there we go. Oh, it's good. Yeah, you can see the valve gear there moving. It's a bit like a dyno, isn't it? Yeah. So it's just sitting on some dyno wheels. It allows it to run on the on the one spot. That's really clever. It's it's really it's great good. when you're doing maintenance or when you or when you just need to like diagnose an issue with a locomotive. Having something like this to be able to put it on, um, yep. uh, you could use something like this as like a, a programming track for after you've installed a DCC yeah. decoder. Yep. Um, and again, it, it's great because you can do all of these things without having that um, the big circle That's layout right. to be able to run it. So I think it's a very valuable tool to have um, for a model railway yeah. enthusiast. No, very and, nice. Um, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of different ones. This is very <laughs> useful with at all. So, I guess something we'll just... so simple. Yeah. And just to confirm, uh, are these new to us here, or are these existing that we've had? No, we had them for a while. Mm. They just that uh, we just received a, a restock. We probably didn't have them for some time because the manufacturer was out of stock for, mm. uh, I think, the la large majority of last year, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. And we now have pretty much every version available whereas I yep. think that in the past we'd only we'd only had a couple yes mm -hmm. so now it's I think it's the full range of, of the different models that they sell yes um, but that's yeah that's one exciting thing about from DCC concepts this week mm -hmm. I thought I'd talk about a few other things I thought were really neat hmm. I'll just get these out ah yes that's a good idea so we, we, we received these huge deliveries that uh, was very much overdue hmm and really interesting things two here. really interesting kind of uh, uh, things here so oh. so this is a um some some drill bits for um drilling holes to install their um their baseboard alignment dale uh dowels yeah other uh, anodized aluminium i'll actually show you the dowels first so the purpose of these is to um if you're building a modular layout uh, it's really really great to um have a way to make sure that those baseboards are aligned perfectly mm. And uh, these these are designed. These are these are really high end solution to um, yeah. um to, to that problem. Uh, and then they also produce this kit that allows you to hook that up to your drill. Yep. Um, and then it drills the appropriate holes that allows that these these to um fit flush within the That's baseboard. Right. Yep. So they don't hold the baseboard together. Um, you would use things like um 
like nuts and bolts or like um, you know butterfly nuts to sort of hold things together but these yep. are designed to make sure that they stay aligned yep. yeah. so it's nice that they give you the bits that you need Press um, size and everything yeah there. and everything you need to get started and then as you progress if you have lots of baseboards you might you might want to get a lot more That's right. but one thing I thought was really cool was they even do uh, baseboard alignment dowels that are conductive so you can actually run your electricity oh. from one module to another right using the dowels yeah these ones are really so, so nice. I guess I mean for, for those that don't quite understand what's happening here so these go on each side of a layout board mm -hmm. so that when you uh, got a layout that goes across it when you press them together it'll power both sides that's correct yep. yeah so they don't look a lot like dowels but no oh, they're, they're <laughs> pretty spectacular aren't they for a dowel so that was yeah that's a really neat product um, again so when you do a big layout effectively Yes. You want to transport it and you cut it in half yes. or in multiple parts, which yes. happens often when you do train shows. Mm. So if you've ever been in a train show, there's some layouts that could be like 20 meters by five or something, some really big things. And mm. so they're cutting modules that could be transportable, maybe a meter by a meter. Yes. And then you need to join them all together. And that's always a challenge mm -hmm. because you need to have all the electrical sort of things connected back together. Yep. And effectively, this is what it does, really mm. make it very, very straightforward yeah I, th this particular product takes care of two problems at the same time That's right. um it's like ease of electrical connectivity, connectivity. Yep. and yep. um making sure that things are aligned which which especially when you're going to the smaller scales is critically important That's things right. derail very easily and yep. um and boards expand and contract with heat and cold uh, so that's that's a really great solution a really well thought out solution definitely. to that problem definitely really clever and a couple other things we have oh, are restock. the um, yeah. So we've got a restock of the cobalt turnout motors. Okay. Yep. Part of their big range of. Um, they're very popular, aren't they? So. Yeah. So we've been waiting on these for a while, and, and they're finally back available, as well as a, a, a full restock of um, DCC decoders. That's right. Yep. So if you have a locomotive that needs um, DCC installation, there's a really good chance that we'll have a decoder that will work and yep. fit in virtually any locomotive. Yep. That you might have so these are designed to just screw onto the base board and then just move the turnout that's correct yep yeah from open to closed and these can be connected to modules that allow for um computer control yep. and that's something that we're going to be looking in, into in the future i think because okay. that'd be really fun to play with it would be definitely so 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 how do you control this obviously you can do it with a computer how else can you control them um using a, a switch and just a, a standard like a standard module that you would so use for which is the Pico Mate. Yeah. You can just, yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So I guess uh, we should probably do a, a, a eventual demonstration of this because it's quite interesting. So, um, where are we? If you look here, there is this uh, little pin here. Oh, so, so that's the arm. That's the arm here, right? Yeah. That's yep. the arm that moves. And this one moves, oh, sorry. So there's this little arm here. This moves from one side to the other and effectively trigger little pin, so yep. shall we call it, that connects to your point mm -hmm. and helps switching it from one side to the other. Actually, let's go up a little bit. Here we go. So this is connected to your baseboard like that, mm -hmm. pretty much. And, and your little pin goes up here and controls your your your, uh, your point. So that's really, that's really interesting. And as you can see here, you've got all the different connections, I guess, for the different way you can set it up, right? That's exactly right, yeah. It's really beefy, isn't it? So it's... um. It's, these, are, these are quite simple in terms of their installation and wiring, um, but in terms of functionality, they're a lot more sophisticated than, than most other point motors on the market. C can you actually connect them in series? So if uh, you can program like a, a direction and one preview one trigger in a direction, then the following does it too? I believe you can do yeah. that, yes. Wow, that's, mm. that's interesting. Yeah. Brilliant, so this is oh. the concert. So I guess we should, now that we have stock again, we should a few a few tutorials on mm -hmm. what we can do with this because it's uh, it's quite impressive how you can extend that um, you know ability of controlling or remote controlling the full layout it's interesting how it's got all the uh, the molded ears as well so you've got yes. this, this panel here so you can mount it like this yeah or you've even got this one so you can mount it this way ah you're right yes okay so for the screw holes so double orientation and they give you um, they give you the, tape, isn't it? the yeah. It's oh, a, there's a padding, isn't it's it? It's a padding bracket yeah, and the and the screws and the oh. actual and the pin that drives the. Oh, okay. That goes through here. Okay. All the features are included. Yep. 
Okay. Brilliant. Wow. Excellent. So there's a big restock of DCC concept, all kind of um, DCC equipment and electrical, I guess, mm. equipment for uh, railway layout. There'll be a bit more to come in the next few weeks. Yeah, very nice. I hear you recorded a couple of videos this week. I did. Yeah, I've, I've got a couple of these products and we played with them and got them out of the box Brilliant. and yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah. as always, keep an eye on our YouTube channel because we have a video going up every day. Yep. And it'll be all kind of different things as we saw some, some train uh, subjects as well now. BJ's done some interesting tutorial on what kind of things. He's done some polishing, some uh, washes, unboxing, washes, yeah. quite a few things. Really. Mm. So jump on that YouTube and subscribe so you mm. see what's new every day. Yep. And uh, I guess we're almost at the end again. Is it? You should bring the car That's back. Quick. You should bring the car back and It's coming, and it's coming, it's coming. Beep. That's reversing. Okay, so... Ding, ding. I think Rob had uh, the color, which is candy apple, and is just absolutely spot on. Yep. And so this is a uh, Valiant Chrysler candy apple, mm -hmm. and was a drag car, wasn't it? A drag car? Mm -hmm. Well, it's got the, the little wheelie. It's got a wheelie, the yep. wheelie bar. It's got the suitcase for the uh, parachute on the back. Yeah, and it's got a big motor at the front. Yep, it's got the big blower. Out. That's it, supercharger. The supercharger. So that's a 1970. Let's reveal this. 1970. 1970. And this is another new 118 scale die cast. So doors are opening uh, yeah. from uh, DDA collectibles for memory. Um, and have a range of these cars actually that we're going to present through the following, following weeks. Let's jump on the top camera. Okay. Here we go. I believe to assist, I think it was also the VG model of the Chrysler. The VG model, so Valiant 1970 Chrysler VG Candy Red Supercharge. Love that shaker on the bottom. Yes. Like the shaker. <laughs> not your grandma's Valiant, that's for sure. <laughs> Definitely not. Well, I've seen a video <laughs> that probably everyone has seen on Facebook or of this uh, older, I think 91 year old lady doing, mm -hmm. doing uh, uh, drifting or something. Really? Yes, yes. She's going around the internet. That's quite That's awesome. fun. In a Valiant? No. Well, I actually didn't pay attention at the time, but it could be some, I don't know. I don't think that's a factory color, but it sure is a nice color. Definitely mm. a nice color. Candy apple. Really pops, candy, doesn't it? Candy apple? Yeah. Yep. Red. Very deep. Mm. Very deep. Metallic as well, isn't it? Is it a bit metallic? Probably not. No, it's actually not metallic. No, it's just straight, straight candy. Straight candy. Mm. I remember getting candy apples at the supermarket when I was a kid, or even at the greengrocer. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Very I good. I was tempted to buy one the other day, and then I oh, thought yeah? about what my dentist might tell me. Oh, really? I uh, yeah. don't think about that. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, your mouth gets very red after you finish one of those. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, let's see if we've got any questions. Mm. We're almost at the end. Yep. An hour and ten minutes, a big show today. Oh, well. We have a couple of other things that we didn't get to, mm. but we'll push them to next week. Yep. And so, otherwise, uh, keep an eye on our socials, as we said, YouTube, yep. Facebook, and Instagram. Yep. Things going up every day. Yes. And uh, let us know in the comments. Any any suggestion on video topics That's what right. we should bring next week? Yep. So we're still going to do the tutorial that uh, Tony asked about doing uh, wood grain painting on propellers. Yes. So I just got to prep that one, and we'll get onto that. I have to find some propellers. Uh, but that won't be hard to do. We should make a tutorial on how to make propellers. How to make propellers? Yes. And, and we'll get then, a little whittling knife. Yeah, yes. A relaxing a reed afternoon. hanging out of my, my mouth and I'll just be whittling away. Yeah. Like yeah, absolutely. So, uh, thank you, Bruce. Thank, thank you, Captain S. Man. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yes, thank you again. Have a good weekend. And join us throughout the week on the social media and just let us know what you want to see next week. Yep. Enjoy the hobby. Yep. That's All right. right. All right. Everyone, Thanks, see guys. you guys next time. Bye-bye.